So due to some unforeseen setbacks, I currently have to change the type of content that I'm creating for the channel. But I still obviously want to take care of some projects in the garage. So I figured now is the perfect time to add a 3D printer and to learn a little bit of CAD. So one of the first things I decided to do, and I'll link to that video up here where I talk about adding that 3D printer, which one I got and all that. Um, but one of the first things that I want to address with the 3D printer, one of the first issues, one of the first things I want to kind of tackle is a little bit of toolbox organization. So some of the first little organizational items I decided to design and print for the toolbox are for my ratchets. I decided to add some ratchet organization and I wanted to make sure that I could incorporate it with the existing Alien Space Saver tool organizer that I'm already using. So let's go up to the computer, go into CAD, and I'll show you kind of how I went about designing my ratchet organizers. Here I'm working on the half inch wrench organizer and I tried to take a 3 8 design that I had already made and modify it for the half inch. Now, like I said in the last video, I don't know CAD, I'm learning it, so I'm finding that as I make some of these changes, I'm breaking things further down the line. So I'm having to go back and like move things around and readjust things that I shouldn't have to, but I'm learning. I'm learning the order of operations kind of kind of matter when it comes to, to part design. But here I'm making, these are the, the holes that mount the wrench organizer to the same rods that the Alien Space Saver organizers use. So I wanna make sure that all that stuff lines up so I can continue to use the same the same organizer system I'm, I'm already running. And then I gotta, like I said, make the cutout for the ratchet head to fit in and then making the cutouts for the anvil. I, I didn't want these things to be oversized. Um, the first one that I made, I ended up, when I first designed it, I think it's actually this design that I'm recording here. It actually ended up being way too wide. I tried to incorporate the head and the anvil within the constraints or within the, the perimeter of the organizer. And that didn't really work. So I had to go back and kind of narrow it so that it, it's a narrower design, a narrower print. One, to save some material. Second, I just think it looked a lot better being narrower so that the head of the ratchet just barely fit in there. But here I am just kind of learning how I, how I gotta go about making these things. I'm trying to round the edges and it's not as easy as just going, you know, click a fillet. You have to go and like actually create your own for some of these, for like the, the face. I don't, I don't know all the termina terminology guys, so bear with me, but like I said, learning this process and, and figuring out the steps you need to take in what order is kind of, kind of important. And I'm learning that as I go. But here you can see the design is really starting to take shape. I want it to be tall enough that it kind of uh, encloses the, the ratchet head a little bit. And that allows me to put like a little shelf on top and put the ratchet size on top of it. Not that it's really important but it's kind of a, a design thing that I wanted to incorporate. And during this process, luckily I have, I sped this up a lot. This was probably about two and a half hours of design into this because like I said, I would change something and it would break because I was taking an, an existing design. I would change one thing and the constraints didn't match and it was just throwing off the whole design. And I don't know if, I don't know if it'll show up in the screen recording here that just how frustrating how frustrated I was getting in the, this whole process because like I said I would change something and then the whole thing would just break and wouldn't work I'm like I couldn't figure out why it kept reverting back to like a, an earlier design it would show and here you can see like it's I would make this cut out but then it wouldn't line up right like it, like it would be partially cut out or like it would be shifted and that was because of a previous constraint like I said guys playing with the CAD and learning how you know one change can affect things down the line and the order of operations and how you have to kind of link everything together it's a whole learning process i do not know cad at all i am fumbling my way through this that's why a simple design like this from an existing design that i had already made took me two and a half hours and it wasn't done it was it was it was uh wrong i had to actually go back and, and modify it again after this because there you see it jumped really wide and then but i was trying to make it narrower so <laughs> i was i was so so frustrated 
it was really starting to annoy me. I, I almost walked away from it. I was just getting so angry. And here I am repositioning on the bottom. I since it's for a half inch ratchet, I wanted to have I had and I had the space to add more magnet holes to help hold it to the drawer bottom. So I added those in, rounded the edges, filleted those a little bit to make it a little bit easier to get the magnet in there. Um, yeah, it's just I kind of really wanted these things to look. I didn't want them to look like they were just kind of thrown together. I wanted it almost to look like a production a production part. So I was kind of careful when it came to you know design features. I wanted nice rounded edges. I wanted you know fillets and, and little and stuff like that. I didn't want it to just be square corners, a box like what's showing there right now because again, it went fat. I was like, why is it going fat? Why is it not lining up? See, it wasn't the constraints. Something wasn't working out right, and it kept reverting back to other views. And yeah, I was so frustrated in the whole process. But I eventually figured it out, and I figured out in the design. I moved things around in the design, kind of like reordered them, so that now I can go back and make minor changes, and hopefully not affect something up the line from it. Um, it still affects some things down the line. Like I said, I'm still learning it all, um, but it's been a fun process being able to to just kind of take the time to sit down and, and learn this stuff. Um, you know, like anything with practice, with, with, with repetition, with just sitting down and doing it, it'll get easier. I'll figure out what works. I'll learn tricks, you know, and, and uh, there you see, you know, you see how wide that thing looks. And I, unfortunately, when I was designing it, it didn't dawn on me right away. And then I started to print it. And halfway through the print, and I, ha I still have it here on the desk. I'll show you guys in a minute. I got a half, I got about a third of the way through the print, maybe. And I was like, wait a minute, something doesn't look right. Um, so I stopped it, and I went back and, and redesigned it again to the to the uh, version that is currently in my toolbox right now. I have one sitting here, one of each. I got the one that I stopped, and I have a completed one. That still had some changes that had to be made to it, but it's close enough. Oop, dropped it. It's close enough to the to the uh, one that's in the toolbox. I'll, I'll show you guys here in just a second. Um, and hopefully the the printer running here uh, in the background isn't affecting my audio here. I'm printing out actually parts for the next video as I'm doing this voiceover. So, but yeah, this was just like I said, just sitting here getting all the measurements right this was frustrating for some reason it kept shifting my constraint i tried to make it a perfectly perpendicular and here watch here you see it it's gonna i got that set up and i slide that over and it, it like joggled in or it would go like a like a parallelogram instead of a rectangle it was <laughs> so frustrating i eventually just had to like create the rectangle from the other side like watch i think this is it's going to create the right kind and then it joggled in. I'm like, what? Why is it doing that? And then I figured, let me try from the other side, and that worked. So <laughs> I don't know why. I can't explain it. Maybe somebody can, can explain it down in the comments. But, yeah, I don't know why that 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 did that. And here you can see I'm, I'm redoing stuff that I did earlier in the video because I basically had to just delete a lot of the design elements and go back and recreate them in order to get get it to stop going like really wide to narrow and to have stuff fit the way that it was supposed to for some reason i don't know like i said i don't know why i would make a change but it, it was acting like it wouldn't take effect it's just the whole cad cad learning curve i guess um so yeah it's definitely uh you guys that are good good with cad i give you guys props man because just sitting here learning it and learning it on my own is uh, frustrating. I don't even know if the way that I did this is correct, but you know what? It worked for me. It, event it eventually worked out. I probably, there were probably 10 ways to do this a lot simpler, with a lot less headaches. Um, but you know, like I said, I'm learning and it worked out in the long run. It eventually got me a, an item that I, that I like and that I'm using in my toolbox right now. So yeah, here you can see the kind of the design is starting to kind of take shape, but look at how fat that thing is. And this whole time it never, never dawned on me that it was gonna be so fat. So you can see the width of the part, that's actually 
able to incorporate both the head of the ratchet and the anvil. So the whole thing fit in the constraints. And then, I, like I said, I got about a third of the way through the print. And I was like, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't necessarily like that. I'm going to go back and redesign it again. I think that redesign only took me like a half an hour because I spent the time here to reorganize things. And uh, I got the order of operations down a little bit better. So I went in, redesigned it, and printed them out. And it worked out just a whole lot better. But yeah, I mean, this is, like I said, a whole learning process with the CAD. I'm having a blast learning it, even though I'm ha frustrated at a lot of the points in this part design and other part designs that, you know, but it's it's just, a, it is what it is, and it's a, it's a learning process. I'm enjoying it, but definitely got to, it's not going to happen overnight. So, yeah, props to you guys that know this stuff. But I'll, uh, I'll just cut this uh, time lapse a little bit short and I'll show you guys uh, the two parts that where I decided to make the change and the change that I made or whatever and I'll, I'll show you those two here in just a second. All right so yeah here is that part that I was designing that in CAD right there the one that I said that I got about a third of the way through the print and realized yeah it was way too wide for what I wanted. Um, I actually wanted more like this. This is just wide enough for the ratchet head to sit in, and then those notches there, these cutouts are for the anvil. Like I said, it's got the mag ho magnet holes in the bottom. And then I decided I also added this magnet hole right there in the center just to help hold that ratchet in place. Even though these cutouts right here, you know, these are to help the, the anvil sits there and that prevents it from sliding out when you open and close the drawer. I figured while I'm in there designing, might as well just go ahead add in an extra magnet hole and what I'm using are just little eight millimeter uh, neodymium magnets so yeah guys these these designs like I said you would think the weight of the ratchets would be enough to kind of help hold things in place and when they're on rails and all linked together but I still run into issues with like my stubby like ratcheting open end wrenches those still slide around. So that was why I went ahead and I'm, I designed my own Alien Space Saver t styled uh, wrench holder, but I added magnet holes. So I'm gonna be printing some of these out in black to match what's already in the drawer. Um, and the magnets will help hold that whole thing in place. Same with these, you know, I got the the magnet holes in the bottom these will magnet through the foam to the base of the drawer and then all linked together on the rod they're nice and stable in place um i did buy some different filament colors maybe thinking that i would you know have like one color you know just to kind of help kind of tie the whole toolbox together have like black for standard and blue for metric for some of the other tools like the sockets and the wrenches and everything like that haven't really decided yet. I'm working on that. Um, but this has been the uh, kind of the first thing that I wanted to make to get my work on, get my toolbox organized while I'm kind of out of commission, not able to do any wrenching. Now is a good time to learn this. Um, but yeah, so I've got all these printed out. I showed you how, they, how they're set up in the drawer. We can go back down there, I'll give you another look, maybe a little bit closer look at just exactly how they all mount and match with the alien space savers. And here are the, the wrench organizers or the ratchet organizers in place. I really like the way these turned out. Like I said, they got all the smaller ones for the quarter inch and the three eighths have two magnets on the bottom like that. The half inch have four and then they all have that extra magnet inside. I just kind of crazy glued them in place. And you can see that really helps to hold. Even if the magnet wasn't there, that cutout, this notch right there, would really hold that anvil in place and keep it and help it stay in place. The 3 8 are a little short, um, but overall, I'm really happy with the design. I could go back, and like I said, they're my files. I can go back and I can recreate and redesign these 3 8 so they fit a little bit better. But overall, the notch, it depends on how the anvil is positioned. If it's more sloped, you know, it can kind of slide out. But that's why I added the magnet. It was a simple change to the design. Now, 
I've seen versions like this that have, you know, supports for the handles. And at first, my first thought was, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have extra stuff in the drawer that I don't need. But OCD, you know, these things can shift side to side, which kind of bugs me when they're not laying in there nice and straight. So I may make some, some little uh, handle supports that also magnet to the drawer. It would be a quick, simple little, little like V-notch maybe that they can all sit in and we just straight, keep everything straight. So yeah, that whole process of, you know, designing those tool holders, those ratchet holders, printing it out. And a lot of times what I would do was like the, when I had the, I did the quarter inch first, once I had those like fully designed at all the constraints and everything dialed in, all the measurements and all the sizes of everything dialed in, I would print it out let that print run while I was working on the, the 3 8 design. And then the same thing while I was working on the, the half inch, my, some of my 3 8 ones, I believe, were printing at the same time that I was designing the half inch. So, you know, multitask, get stuff done. And then I'll probably change it, but that's a good thing. I think each one, each organizer to print it, when you do the printing, the, the printer tells you like the amount of filament that it used and basically kind of like a, an estimate of the cost. I think each one's cost me like 40 cents. I think the quarter inch ones cost me like 28 cents and the half inch ones are costing me like 40 something cents, not counting the magnets. So if I don't like it, I can change it. This takes more, takes a little bit longer to print it, but that's it. I'm really enjoying having a 3D printer to help work on projects here in the garage. It's something that I've been wanting to do for a while and I've been wanting to learn CAD because, well, I've got over in the corner of the garage a plasma table that I've been working on for a while or that I worked on a while ago and it's just been sitting over there because it needs to get finished and I need to know CAD to use that. So it's been kind of like a win-win. Use CAD, learn 3D printing, and then if I ever decide to get around to that, that plasma table, that CNC plasma table, I already have some experience with the CAD and I'm rambling and I really appreciate you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe, hit the bell, see you on the next one.